Hi, welcome to You Can Talk. I'm Ruth Finney, and this is a channel solely dedicated to helping you talk your way to healthier relationships. Whether you're married or whether you're dating or if you're just struggling to communicate with family or friends or people you work with, then this is the channel that will help you experience some real change. If you're willing to put some simple principles into practice, meet me here on Thursdays. Become a part of the talk community by subscribing to You Can Talk and walk with me through the user's manual as we discover some revelations in communication that you can incorporate into your life so that you can talk your way to healthier relationships. In the last episode, we talked about how we can continue to love those we struggle with from a distance. If you missed it, I'll put a link below for you to go back and see what the manufacturer had to say about that. Because May is Mental Health Awareness Month, in today's episode, I want to talk about the invisible walls we face in communication when mental illness is present in a relationship. Now, though I'm no mental health expert, there is not a single one of us that doesn't deal with mental illness on some level. Whether it's we ourselves, someone in our immediate household or within our family, people we work with or people we interact with throughout the day, we all face some form of mental illness on a daily basis. Often it can be in the form of a medically diagnosed illness or ranging levels of depression the result of battling a trauma that was experienced sometime throughout life, or maybe it's just the everyday stressors of life that bear down on us. For me, mental illnesses are the invisible walls that surround us that can be the most difficult thing to recognize, penetrate, overcome, or even knock down when it comes to communicating in relationships. These mental illness walls are a struggle mostly because they're invisible. And the majority of people who suffer from them go out of their way to make sure that they're not seen because they don't want to be labeled as not normal. Though really, what is normal these days? Now, other types of people with mental illnesses walk around with it like a label on their t-shirt, not necessarily because they're trying to draw attention, but they want everyone to treat them accordingly so they can get through life with the least amount of turmoil as possible, because some days it's a struggle just to make it through the day. Now, we've come a long way with mental health education, but no matter how educated we are, there's still a societal stigma attached to it. And unless you're made aware of the mental illness, it can often be the thing that hinders our ability to connect with others in meaningful ways, and it prevents the healthy relationships that we desire. And the frustration comes when we don't understand why. We say to ourselves, why is this person this way? Why is it so hard to communicate? Why can't they just understand me? Why does everything have to be so difficult or such a challenge for us? Well, most of the time it's because we're facing an invisible barrier that we don't even know exists. And even if we do, we may not know how to approach it. So we're quick to claim it's a million other reasons rather than revealing the things that are keeping us mentally, physically, or emotionally barricaded. And those walls are so high and so thick because the human spirit behind them is so broken or so fragile that we're just too scared to let anybody in because we're afraid that this might be the person that ends us. And because our human nature is to protect and defend ourselves at all costs in order to survive, we keep everything, or should I say everyone, who could potentially harm us on the other side of the wall. So where do we begin with communication in these instances? Well, it begins with our approach. The medical field has a term they use called universal precautions. If you don't know what this is, it basically means that you treat everyone as though they could potentially have a communicable illness, no matter how clean, wealthy, or healthy they look. Therefore, we see most all personnel working in some form of healthcare approaching us wearing gloves, masks, scrubs, or some kind of protective medical gear to not only protect themselves from acquiring anything that we may have, but also to protect us from acquiring anything that anyone else may have. When we see medical staff approaching us wearing these items, it automatically builds a sense of trust that this person is looking out for the both of us. And therefore, we're more willing to open our mouths and talk to them, right? Versus when they don't, we're like, hey, 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 what you doing? Where's your gloves? Where's your mask? I don't know where your hands have been. 
we immediately go into defense mode because now this medical professional has lost our trust and we begin to question their intentions. So now we don't want to tell them anything. And in fact, we may not even want to deal with them. We'll even ask for somebody else if we feel that we can't trust them. Well, when it comes to mental illnesses, we should practice the same universal precaution. Treat every person we meet, live with, or come in contact with as though they could potentially have some form of mental illness or just struggling mentally in some way. That means assume that there are walls and approach those walls with gloves of compassion and a mask that filters out mean, hateful, or selfish words. If our invisible walls could talk, I imagine they would say something like this. I've been physically abused. So please don't be so quick to put your hands on me. I suffer from depression. So if I don't respond in a way that you think I should, don't take it personal. It doesn't mean I'm not enjoying this experience. I've experienced sexual trauma. So please find other ways to show me love and don't force me into situations that I'm uncomfortable with. I was bullied my entire childhood. So please show me how I matter to you. Ask my opinion and don't just make commands. I have a diagnosed mental illness and I take medication. So please take time to get educated and ask me how you can be of any help. I'm under a lot of stress right now with my life. So when I say no, I can't do it, please don't assume that I can. I look perfectly normal, but I have mental illness. So please don't assume that I don't. The world is thirsty for genuine kindness and authentic human connection without strings attached. When we look at our user's manual, there are numerous stories in the Bible where Jesus was not afraid to approach others, engage with others, or reveal the real issue. But afterwards, he would show compassion to those suffering, and in many cases, helped or even healed those suffering from mental illness. When we become willing to allow our walls to talk and reveal the mental scars that make us no less human than anyone else, we weaken those walls that hold power over us and prevent us from living life as our authentic selves. But if I can let down my walls and walk in freedom, then maybe I can help others to be free too. But if I don't give voice to my walls, then they will continue to hold me hostage, delay my healing, and prevent me from having the type of relationships that I desire and I deserve. If you can relate to any or all of these communication struggles and are tired of the seemingly endless cycle of communication barriers that are keeping you from the relationships that you desire to have with others, then become a talker, subscribe to You Can Talk, select that notification bell down below and meet me here on Thursdays for the next episode where I will be discussing more ways that we can talk our way through these trying times. Leave a comment below and let me know what will be your tip of the week for talk-inspired practice that you're willing to commit to working on. Whatever it is, I'm rooting for you and praying for you because you can tame the tongue, approach with compassion, listen deeply, knock down the barriers, and talk your way to healthier relationships. Let your communication be the light of God's love the world so desperately needs to hear. Thanks for watching and if you would please like and share this video and I'll see you here next Thursday.